straight all day. Straight all day. Now tuned in to the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work. Putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve is yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative, which is the go get energy that moves me, you, him, her, and them, and they to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. And then what we do, ladies and gentlemen, this is what we're going to do for you. We're going to put all this together into one bundle, one package, one mindset, one method, one philosophy, one book, one show, one university. This master class right here that is called Work On Your Game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic, first of all, the show is brought to you by Work On Your Game University. If you have not checked it out and found out what we got going on over there, then I suggest you go to workonyourgameu.com or workonyourgameuniversity.com. We own both domains, so we got you covered. We thought ahead. And today's topic, anyway is the election is over. Now what? What do you do now? Now I'm actually recording this in full disclosure. I'm recording this on October the 27th. So I'm recording this a week before the election. So this is not, this is a nonpartisan conversation as all of mine are. I don't give a damn who wins the election. Well, I kind of do, but I kind of don't. I mostly don't, I kind of do. So I'm recording this way before the election. Now this has nothing to do with who won. And we're gonna talk about that in a moment. And I also wanna let you know that since this show right here, uh, since we're putting the show out here every day the way that we do, the only thing I ask for you, the only thing I ask from you in exchange for the value that we're giving is that you go on uh, Apple Podcasts or Stitcher or wherever else you can leave a review. Those are two places that I know. Leave a review of the show. Leave a rating and review of the show. Let people know the value that you are getting from the show. Take a screenshot of your review and send it to me. Send it to me on Twitter. Send it to me on Instagram in the DM. Send me an email. Show me that you left some, uh, you left a review of the show and we might find something great that we can give you in exchange. But either way, just, we're giving you the show already. Go and leave a review of the show. All right, all that being said, the election is over. Now what are we going to do? And full disclosure here, ladies and gentlemen, in my, um, the document that I keep, where I keep the list of all the topics that I'm going to talk about, this exact episode, I, I go, I don't go in order. I just, every time it's time for me to record, I decide which one do I want to talk about. This particular episode, believe it or not, this is, you can call this whatever you want. This is number 45 in my documents. A numbered document, it's number 45. Now, if you don't know the significance of that number, then you can figure it out on the way home. But anyway, since I'm recording this a week before the election, I'm letting all of you know ahead of time, before whatever result occurs on November the 3rd, to help anyone who does not work in politics, okay? So you don't, it, you don't if you don't work in politics, that means you don't have to get uh, triggered, excited, angry, or overly worked up about whatever has happened on November the 3rd, whether that is in the, excuse me, whether that's in the, the presidential election or any of the other elections that are happening that day. So a lot of elections happening that day. A lot of you no know, races are going to be settled by the elections that happen that day. Okay. What we're going to talk about is what exactly you can do now. This is also assuming, I'm assuming in recording this now, that we will have a clear outcome by the time you listen to this. So this is going to come out on November the, the 4th. So Nico knows it's coming out November the 4th, the day after the election. Okay, so assuming that we have a result that day, even if we don't actually, you can use what I'm gonna share with you here today once we do have a result. However long that takes, whether it's today when you're listening to this or you know it takes weeks or months for us to figure it out, this is what you need to do next. All right, point number one, the topic once again, the election is over, now what? All right, and this is especially for those of you who have put a lot of energy into talking about, arguing about, getting excited about, worked up about, stressing yourself out over the e election process, the actual election results, whatever those results happen to be, and you know, whatever the fallout happens to be from that. Number one, if your candidate of choice won the election, or your candidates, plural, of choice, won their elections, I suppose you can celebrate. Now you can be happy, all right? You voted for somebody and they won. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. It's like if you pull for your favorite sports team and they win the championship, nothing wrong with celebrating. I mean, you didn't win the championship, but you cheered for the team, it's all good. You can, you can celebrate, nothing wrong with that. When Barack Obama won the election in 2008, his first, the first election that he won in 2008, I was not in the United States. I happened to be in Germany at the time that that happened, uh, playing ball, but I remember the day after it happened, the newspaper, even in Germany, and I was in some small town in Germany, Barack Obama's picture was on the front page of that newspaper. So I can imagine what it was like in the United States at that time. Now, this is 2008, so this is before Instagram was, I don't even think Instagram was out yet. Uh, we did have Twitter, but Twitter was just barely coming about. I think I joined Twitter right after the election, and Facebook was out, but it wasn't you know, what it is now. 
at that time, the big thing was blogging. I mean, blogging is still a big thing, but back then, if you wanted to get news and see what was going on, you read blogs and websites and stuff like that. And there was a, a journalist that I read, he was a sports guy, and he was talking about, he lived in New York, and he was talking about what happened that night, the day after he wrote, he wrote an article the day after the election that Obama had won. He lived in New York, and he talked about the fact that, and this is a white guy, he was talking about the fact that he cried that night when he heard Barack Obama had officially won the presidency, and he talked about, and I heard many stories about how people were like celebrating in the streets in many American, in many places in America as if their home team had won the sports championship after never winning one before. There were crazy celebrations in the streets when Obama uh, won the election slash championship. And it may happen this time around. I mean, this time around, depending on who won yesterday, there may be celebrations happening in the streets right now. But I think no matter who won the election, I don't think the celebrations will be as pronounced for any side. I mean, if Kanye wins, I think it'll be you know, interesting and people will be like, right, what the hell is going on? I don't think there'll be celebrations if he wins, maybe by Kanye himself. I think if uh, Trump wins, there may be some celebration, but he won before already. So the people who saw him win the first time, they're not going to be as excited for him to win a second time. At least I don't think they would be. And if Biden has won, I think some people will celebrate because Trump didn't win. <laughs> I think that's the, the main driver for a lot of people voting for Biden. And maybe some people will be celebrating you know, the actual presence of Joe Biden himself. But I don't think Joe Biden generates the kind of energy that Barack Obama did. Whether you are a Biden fan or not, I think you had to agree to that. So I don't think even if there is celebration, it won't be as pronounced as when Obama won. I don't think any of these candidates, based on their situation, is going to generate that type of excitement. But if you want to celebrate for your candidate winning, it's all good. OK, that's the point that I'm making here. OK. It's one already won before, the other one doesn't generate that kind of excitement. All right, be happy that you got what you want. You voted for a person they want, okay? So if you want to celebrate, go ahead. Now, if your candidate happened to lose last night, and again, assuming that we know that we have a result and everyone has agreed that that's the result, if your candidate did not win last night, here's, what I, here's my prescription to you. You can grieve for a little bit. You want to grieve for a few minutes, a few hours, maybe even a week. Just grieve about the fact that your candidate did not win or the, you know, the calamity of the fact that the other person did win, whoever that other person happens to be. After you get done grieving, though, here's what, here's what you need to do. You need to accept that your candidate losing is a possibility when we are in a democracy. All right, this is what happens in democracies. Majority rules. So even if you think the majority are a bunch of goddamn idiots, if you think the majority are a bunch of you know, fill in the blank or whatever labels that people have been throwing on each other because of who they support for the last you know, six months, four years, whatever. You all know what those phrases are. I don't even need to repeat them. If you think that the majority, the people who voted for at least the electoral college majority, let's put it that way. We got to make sure we're being specific here. You think those people who voted for the person who won and it was not the person that you thought should win or a person you wanted to win. You think they're a bunch of fill in the blanks, negative, negative term, or derogatory term. All right, listen, that's the game. This is what happens in a democracy. The majority rules and sometimes you ain't in the majority. I do not, I did not always get why people got so worked up over this stuff of political outcomes and elections, knowing that there are you no know, 300 plus million people in America and not all of them are gonna feel the same way as you. And sometimes you're just not gonna get the person that you wanted. I didn't always get why people got so worked up over it knowing that, but then I did start to get it. Because I look at sports, you know, being an athlete and being a, a sports enthusiast. When I look at sports, the same thing happens. You know, people get so excited when the Lakers win the championship. But I'm looking at it like, listen, only 12 people play for the Lakers. And then there's maybe 100 people who work for the organization. What the hell are the rest of y'all so excited about for? You don't play for the Lakers. Who you play for? Nobody. But they get excited just like they play on the team. They'll get on the internet and argue about it and gloat as if they actually score some points in the championship. And if I can understand a sports fan doing it, and I can understand a political fan doing it. All right, so it's basically the exact same thing. You get excited because the Yankees won, even though you have never uh, swung a bat in your life. But that's just is how it is. This is human nature. We attach ourselves to some movement or cause that we get excited about. And when they win, we're happy, even though we're, we were not actually part of the team that technically won. Fair enough. All right, it's just human nature. So. If your person won, I told you what to do. If your person lost, I told you what to do. So everybody clear on that, all right? If you cheered for or you are heavily emotionally invested in the success or failure of any presidential candidate or whatever other candidate that was running last night as of this recording or as of the time that you hear this recording, then I just told you what to do. You know exactly what happens next. Point number two, the topic here today is the election is over. Now what? Well, hopefully the election is over. Now what? Number two, 
I want you to understand something. Now that we have a result, and now that is done, or hopefully we have a result, and now that it is done, again, I'm recording this a week before the election, it's time for you to get back to focusing on handling your business. Now the election is over. We're done paying attention to other people's business. All right, the business of the election is, you think the business of the election is to serve the people. No, the business of the election is to serve the politicians. All right, the game of politics is first about politics, it's secondly about the people. All right, and if a politician does something that helps the people in the process of helping themselves, so be it. But that's the way that I look at politics. Not to say I'm not anti-politics. I'm not against politics. I'm not against politicians. I want you to understand that the game of politics is first and foremost about the game of politics. Secondly, is about you know, who can get help in the process of playing the game. That's just the way that I see things. Maybe we can talk about that in a different day. Maybe not. But it's time for you, regardless of how you feel about politics. The election's over, so whoever got chosen got chosen, and they're going to do whatever they're going to do. It's time for you to get focused on handling your own business. And why do I say this? Being that the government is a democracy, in other words, majority rules, at least for the most part, <laughs> whether your candidate of choice won or lost this time around, let's say that they won. Listen, next time around, they might lose. If they lost this time, next time around, they might lose again. In other words, you might not get what you wanted politically, no matter how often you vote, no matter how hard you campaign, no matter if you got the little signs that you put in your grass, you wear the t-shirts, you got the buttons, you on social media amplifying every story, trashing the opponent and making it your person that you like look great, you still might not get what you want. This is just the way that the game works when we have a democracy. Everybody understands that, right? On a, on a basic level. So if your candidate did not win, that is not a free pass, nor is it an excuse for you to fail. All right, your candidate didn't win. That's, that's, that's terrible. I, I'm sorry for your loss. Now it's time for you to get back on the horse and do your thing. Your thing. My position with regards to politics is this. I'll put it in one sentence. Work on your fucking game so that nothing that the government does or does not do disturbs your foot. Let me repeat my stance on politics just in case anybody ever wants to know. Here it is again. I'll put it in one sentence. Work on your fucking game. So that nothing that the government does or does not do, and anyone within the government does or does not do, can disturb your flow. And why is this my stance on politics? Here's why. Because your person might not win every time. So the person that you want to win is going to do all these great things for you, and then they lose, which means they can't do all those great things for you. That's not an excuse for you to not get done the things you need to do for yourself. All right? You don't want your future or your success to depend on a bunch of people i.e. fellow Americans who also had the power to vote. You don't want your success to depend on those people because they may not share your same point of view. They might not share your same sensibilities. They might not have the same needs and wants that you have. Hey, maybe they're just idiots and they don't share your intelligence. All right, but guess what? They got, the same number, they got the same amount of power to vote as you do. So just in case they don't think like you do, just in case they're not as smart as you, all right, you don't want to stake your success on them thinking the same way that you think because guess what? They might not. That's not a smart gamble to gamble that all right, your politician needs to win for you to succeed in life. All right, that's what we do here on this show every day. It's called work on your game, not your game. Not our game, your game. So that you can get your shit wherever your shit needs to be so that no matter what happens in the outside world, as long as it's not directly coming towards you, you got your stuff taken care of. And look, if you happen to get some political wins, if you're into that stuff, great. But if you happen to not, look, that's great too, because you're still going to do your thing. You're still going to play the game the way that you need to play the game. All right, everybody understand where I'm coming from here. We don't want to be subject to group decisions if we're not in charge of that group. Now, you could be subject to a group decision if you're in charge of the group, because then you can kind of sway the group where you want them to go. But if it's a group that you don't control, like the other 300 million people who live in this country, you don't control that group. Sometimes the group will go with you, sometimes they won't. You don't want your success to be subject to that. All right, you want to be able to create and cultivate your own power not gambling on hoping that the majority of the country sees things your way or the majority of the constituency, whoever's voting, sees things the way that you see them because they might not. Plus, listen, here's another thing. Let's keep in mind, even if you're a candidate of choice or candidates, plural, of choice, won last night, let's, put, let's be real. Who knows if that person's even going to do the things that they promised you they would do? All right, any of you ever voted for a candidate who promised something and then they didn't do it? Oh, you have, huh? So politicians lie too. Like Jay-Z said, men lie, women lie, politicians lie too. All right? Politicians don't always tell the truth. All right? Politicians tell you what they need to tell you to get you to vote for them. Doesn't mean they're actually going to do it. 
right? Because you already voted for them. So if you don't like them or you think they lied after they already won, well, listen, look, bitch, I already got the job. <laughs> what you going to do now? Now, you can vote them out next time, but you got to wait two years or four years or however long it takes. The safest plan for you, here it is, bet on yourself. Don't gamble on, on a politician winning and don't gamble on a politician even after they win doing what they said they were going to do because they might not. They might fail on either one. Episode number 952. The topic is how to bet on yourself and win. You want to listen to that, go to dreallday.com slash and just put the number of the episode. dreallday.com slash 952. How to bet on yourself and win. Point number three. The topic here today is the election is over or the elections are over. What do you do now? Point number three. I want you to understand something. The government in the United States, that is, it is designed to help people at the ground floor of the pyramid. Yet, the government is run by people who are on the top floor of the pyramid. That's weird, right? Let me say it one more time and make sure that's sunk in. The United States government is designed, when it comes to helping people, it helps actually two people. It helps the people who work in the government. All right, they help themselves because humans are driven by self-interest. Even when their very job is to serve the people, they are still driven by self-interest. All right, be mad at the game if you want. It is designed to help either those people in the game who are playing politics and those who are at the bottom level of the pyramid of life. That's what the government does. It does not help people in the middle of the pyramid. It doesn't help people on level two, three, four, anywhere between the top and the bottom. If you exist anywhere between the top and the bottom of the pyramid of life, the government is not designed to help you. Okay. Yet, yeah, the government is run by people who live at the top of the pyramid. That's kind of a weird dynamic. So being it is a weird dynamic, instead of trying to understand it and how to make it work for us, how about we just get out of the ground floor of the pyramid so we are no longer subject to what the government decides to do? I talked about this in episode number 970. Stop running the rat race. Again, that's episode 970. So where do you start to stop running the rat race? You start with how you think. It does not start with what you do. It starts with how you think. It starts with how you see yourself. What type of person do you need to be so that the next election cycle in two years, next year, four years, whenever it is, so that the next election cycle doesn't have you losing your mind because you know that no matter what happens, you are taken care of. It doesn't matter who wins. You can still choose who you want to choose. You can still campaign and make your statements and say what you want to say and feel how the hell, the hell you want to feel. But understand, you don't want to be in a position where that outcome really determines whether you can go this way or that way or what your life is going to be like for the next two, three, four years based on who wins the election because you don't control the outcome of the election. Why would you want your life to be, why would you want your life to be balanced on what happens to something that you don't control? That's not a good position to be in. You want to be in a position of power, right? Okay. So stop running that rat race. Get yourself out of the bottom of the pyramid, starting with how you think, how you see yourself, understanding what type of person you need to be so that the election cycles don't have you losing your mind. And you would do that through reading my book, The Mirror of Motivation, which you can get at mirrorofmotivation.com. Again, it's not about what you need to do. It's about who you need to be. Because once you get the being part right, the doing part will take care of itself. Okay? So ask yourself, what does your approach need to be? How does your posture need to change? I talk about posture in episode number 1411. The topic is fix your posture. Again, Masterclass number 1411, dreallday.com slash 1411. And every episode over a thousand, you got to put a little dash after the number. So dreallday.com slash 1411 dash, and then it'll take you there. Are you ready for that ride of who you need to be? Are you ready for the ride of really looking at yourself and taking this mentality and applying it to your being first, which will impact your doing, which will lead to your having? If you're ready for that, then I suggest you check out Work On Your Game University. We're going to tell you about that in a minute, but you can just look it up at workonyourgameuniversity.com. Let's recap today's class, which is the election is over. At least we hope it is. I'm, again, recording this a week ahead of time. So assuming that the election is over and we have some actual clear outcomes on today, Wednesday, November 4th, when you're listening to this, now what do you do? Point number one, if your candidate of choice won, you can celebrate if you want to. If your candidate of choice lost, you can grieve if you want to. But either way, when things are over, I want you to understand something. All right, your team might have won and you can celebrate. Your team might have lost and you can be mad at it, but the game will go on either way. And the game is your life. The game is not what everybody else is doing, whether it's a politician, whoever you, government official, whatever. The game is what you need to do for yourself. That's the most important game that you play. Point number two, understand something. Now that we have a result and it's done, it's time for you to get back focused on handling your business, okay? Which means whether your candidate won or lost, they might win or lose next time. That is not a free pass, nor is it an excuse for you to fail. 
my position with regards to politics, I suggest maybe you take this position too. Work on your game so that whatever happens in the government does not disturb your flow because your person might not win. Your person might not do what they say they were going to do. Your person might just fail. Your person might try to do what they say they were going to do, but they just fail to get it done because they made all these promises they couldn't, they couldn't, fall, they couldn't uh, follow through on. So do not stake your success on what another person does. I don't care who the other person is. That's not a smart gamble. Best gamble is to gamble on yourself, as we talked about in episode 952. Not only how to bet on yourself, but also how to win that belt. Again, mass class number 952. Number three, the government is designed to help people at the ground floor of the pyramid, but it's run by people at the top of the pyramid. That's a weird dynamic. You don't want to be subject to that. So how about you stop running the rat race like we talked about in episode number 970. Where does that start? With how you think, with how you see yourself, with what type of person you need to be. So elections do not have you losing your mind and they do not control your success or failure in life. It's not about what you need to do. It's about who you need to be. What does your approach need to be? How does your posture need to change? Like we talked about in Mass Class number 1411. If you're ready for that ride, listen up for Work On Your Game University. Work On Your Game. We out of here.